Today we'll be reading from Bereshit, Genesis 6, verses 11 through 13. Genesis 6, Torah portion, Noah, verses 11 through 13. Vatishachet ha arets lifne ha Elohim. Vatimale ha arets Hamas. Vayar Elohim et ha arets. Vahine nishchata. Ki hishchit kol basar et darko al ha arets. Vayomer Elohim la noach. Ketz kol basar ba lifanai. Ki mal a ha arets Hamas. Mipne him. Vihine ni. In English, and the earth was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. And God saw the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted their way upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh is come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Please be seated. Shabbat shalom. Um, before we get started, I want to do a brief ad for the scriptures, <laughs> which may not seem necessary in this setting. Um, we looked and we saw this morning that the reading was from Noah, the story of the flood. Well, we know all the story of the flood. We'll just skip through that quickly because we've read it so many times. We'll go on to something else. But think about that. Um, I've been doing the Midrash for, I don't know, 10, 11, 12 years now. It's been an honor and a joy and a challenge on occasion. Um, so I could go back and find the three other times that I've taught on Noah, but I didn't because I never go back to the previous ones I've done, um, because the Lord always has something that I haven't seen in it before. Um, so when you think about the familiar passages, I mean, we all know the story of Joseph. We could probably repeat it uh, from memory. But think about the Lord opening your mind to things that he knows are there, because he put them there, that he's waiting for you to discover. So. That's the advertisement, is from Second Peter. The waters of salvation. In the Sabbath Torah portion, we've been recounting Noah and the great flood. God looked and saw that the world was totally sinful and unrepentant. The earth, which in the creation account that we read last week in the Torah portion, had been declared by God to be good. It's now been totally polluted by the sins of man. God is therefore determined to destroy all mankind and all animal kind to cleanse his evidently unretrievably polluted creation. The floodwaters were judgment to the wicked and at the same time physical salvation for the just, the just being Noah and his family. In the rainbow covenant after the great flood of Noah's time, Adonai had made a covenant, the covenant with creation, never again to destroy the earth with a flood. And this covenant was symbolized by the rainbow. Through Isaiah, God says, with a little wrath, I hid my face from you for a moment. But with everlasting kindness, I will have mercy upon you, saith the Lord, your Redeemer. For this is like the waters of Noah to me. For as I have sworn the waters of Noah would no longer cover the earth, so I have sworn that I would not be angry with you, nor rebuke you. This is the heritage of the servants of God, and their righteousness, their righteousness is from me, saith the Lord. Please rise for the reading from the Plit Hadashah. Now, just as Noah represented his family, so Yeshua, the Messiah, our Messiah, um, represents the whole family for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive by the Spirit. 
In the days of Noah, eight souls were saved by water. Today, there is an antitype, an antitype, which now saves us, baptism in water. Now, this is not the removal of the filth of the flesh, which is the death of the human body, but rather the answer of a good conscience toward God through the resurrection of Yeshua, our Messiah, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God, angels and authorities and powers having been made subject to him. Please be seated. An antitype which now saves us. What does that mean, an antitype? Biblical covenants were usually certified by a visual symbol. With Noah, of course, it was the rainbow. For the Abrahamic covenant, it was circumcision. And for the Mosaic covenant, it was the Shabbat, our blessed Sabbath. Baptism is also a visual symbol, a sign and a seal of God's grace in Yeshua. The startling statement that baptism now saves us shows how close the relationship is between the sign and the reality that the baptism signifies. Noah's physical salvation through the waters of the flood prefigures the waters of baptism and the salvation that these waters signify to us believers. Water baptism symbolizes the judgment on sin in the death of our Messiah and also the renewal of life, both as we apply them to ourselves during our baptism. The floodwaters were a judgment of the wicked and at the same time physical salvation for the just. But we mustn't mistakenly attribute a magical or sort of mechanical power to the sacrament of water baptism. Peter states that the means of salvation is not performance of the external baptism rite, but what it symbolizes, the union with Yeshua in his death and resurrection. Lord, we thank you that throughout the scriptures you have kept your covenant promise to those who love and serve you in obedience to your word. Send us forth now into the world to love and to serve you as faithful witnesses of Yeshua, our precious and blessed Savior. B'Shem Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen.